Vielen Dank für die Fraktion der Liberalen und Demokraten. Hat jetzt das Wort Herr Verhofstadt. Thank you, thank you, President. I want first of all to uh, to support what Mr. Weber and Mr. Pitella said uh, towards Mr. Tusk, and and, and say to him that uh, at the moment when there is such a crisis in Europe, uh, European institutions have to be united. Uh, European Council and European Parliament, and as you are invited here, you invite us also on Council meetings, and do that also in the extraordinary meetings, please. Uh, well, Mr. Tsipras, welcome. You see, you don't have to be afraid uh, of the European Parliament. Uh, you had a refusal in the beginning. I'm saying as such a big Democrat as Mr. Tsipras, afraid for a debate. That cannot be true. And you are here. So I'm pleased that you are here because it's in uh, uh, the European Parliament that for the first time we discuss, in fact, with you this. I think that there are no solutions possible in the case of Greece and in the case of the Eurozone when they have not the backing of democracy, are not debated in a democracy and debated here in the European Parliament. And that is what we are doing today. But I have to tell you, um, and you started and you said, and I'm, it's, it's true what you said, you said uh, the Greeks did enormous efforts, and that's true. But the problem is not there, it's that the Greek political class didn't do enough efforts uh, in, in the case of Greece. That is the problem today. And I'm angry, I have to tell you. I'm angry because you are talking about reforms, but we never see concrete proposals of reforms. And I'm angry why, I'm angry why, I'm angry because we are in fact sleepwalking towards a Grexit. Already five years we are sleepwalking with the help and with the support, you hear them, of the people of the extreme right at the end. And not only we are sleepwalking, the last months we are running to a Grexit, I have more the impression, but it is not you and it is not we who shall pay the bill. It's going to be the ordinary Greek citizens who are going paying the bill of a Grexit of 30, 40 percent. And so, I have to tell you, if we want to avoid it, there is only one possible way, and you know it very well. And the only possible way is that you come forward in the coming days, in the coming 48 hours with a credible reform package. And that doesn't mean to say, yeah, I want to end clientelism and so on. No, that means that you make a roadmap, that you make a clear calendar, no intentions that there are end dates of the different reforms we need desperately in Greece. And let me give you, let me give you the five things what you have to do. Let me give you the five things what you have to do. I'm even ready to come to Athens to discuss it with you because I like such a challenge with you directly. But what you have to do first, ending the clientelistic system, you need to put legislation for that on the table that doesn't exist and not to apply yourself clientelism. Because a few weeks ago, 13 directors in the Ministry of Education has to be nominated. And by accident, it were 12 of the series of party. And only one, they don't know what his affiliation really is. That's the reality. You're using the system. You are falling in... You're using the system. You are falling in the trap, the trap also of PASOK, who was also the big party of change in Greece after the colonels and we did nothing at all than using the clientelic system for years and for years in their own advantage. You have to downsize the public sector. I know it's difficult maybe for the leftists, but it has to be done because of 800,000 people, civil servants, that cannot work. You, Mr. Tsipras, you have to transform the public banks in the private banking sector. You have to open the markets and the professions for young people. We don't have legislation. Put legislation on the table to open at least 10 professions who are still closed in your country. And finally, finally, let's end. Propose to end the privileges in your country. The privileges of the ship owners. The privilege of the military. The privilege of the Orthodox Church in your country. The privilege... Yeah, but you like it, privilege. Okay, very fine. 
They like privileges, but I not. The privileges of the Greek islands and the privilege not to forget of the political parties, the privilege of the political parties in your countries who receive every day loans and money from public banks who are in fact bankrupt. Also, Syriza, your party, receives such money. And that is a strong... What I ask to you is put all this together in a credible package and put it on the table now in the coming days. And I'm pretty sure that from the other side, from the European side, we're going to be ready to find a solution for that. We're going to find a solution for all these problems. But it has uh, to be done that way. And you can do it because there was never a prime minister in Greece who had such a strong mandate as you. You have even a double mandate. You want the elections and you want the referendum. So you're in the only position of the only political leader in Greece who can put an end to, to that system in Greece. And I said it to you, we also have our responsibility. We have to make, a, yeah, a, a, in my opinion, a debt redemption fund the fastest as possible. And we have to do it the fastest as possible also on the Council. But first things first. You need to come forward with your reform package. This is not the chicken or egg discussion, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And you have a choice, and that is my conclusion. The choice that we have is very simple. How do you want to be remembered? As an electoral accident who made its people poorer in his country? Or won't you be remembered, Mr. Tsipras, as a real revolutionary reformer? in the tradition of Tricupis and Venizelos. I'm not talking about the Venizelos of Pasok, eh, the new one. I'm talking of the real Venizelos, the big leader between the two world wars who modernized this country, a liberal who in fact modernized his administration. That is the choice to make. And I know what you people want. 80% of your people want to stay in Europe and in the Eurozone. So show what you can now and show that you're a real leader and not a false prophet. Do it.